Chapter six is anarcho capitalism against the state. No. All right, so we can move on. <laughs> Due to its basis in private property, so called anarcho capitalism implies a class division of society into bosses and workers. Any such division requires a state to maintain it. However, it need not be the same state as exists now. Regarding this point, so called anarcho capitalism plainly advocates for defense associations to protect property. For these so-called anarcho-capitalists, anarcho however, these private companies are not states. For anarchists, they most definitely are. According to Murray Rothbard in Society Without a State, a state must have one or both of the following characteristics. The ability to tax those who live within it. And or, it asserts and usually obtains a coerced monopoly of the provision of defense over a given area. He makes the same point in The Ethics of Liberty, page 171 in that book. Instead of this, the so-called anarcho-capitalist thinks that people should be able to select their own defense companies, which would provide the needed police and courts from a free market in defense, which would spring up after the state monopoly has been eliminated. These companies, quote, all would have to abide by the basic law code. Society Without State, page 206. Thus, a general libertarian law code would govern the actions of these companies. This law code would prohibit coercive aggression at the very least, although to do so, it would have to specify what counted as legitimate property, how said can be owned, and what actually constitute aggression. Thus, the law code would be quite extensive, actually. How is this law code to be actually specified? Would these laws be democratically decided? Would they reflect common usage, i.e. customs, supply and demand, natural law? Given the strong dislike of democracy shown by so-called anarcho-capitalists, we can think safely that uh, we can safely say that some combination of the last two options would probably be used. Rothbard, as noted in Chapter 1, Section 4, opposed the individualist anarchist principles that juries would both judge the facts and the law, suggesting that instead libertarian lawyers and jurists would determine a rational and objective code of libertarian legal principles and procedures. The judges in his system would, quote, not be making the law, but finding it on the basis of agreed-upon principles derived from either custom or reason. Society Without a State, page 206. David Friedman, on the other hand, argues that different defense firms would sell their own laws. Machinery, machinery of Freedom, page 116. It's sometimes acknowledged that non-libertarian laws may be demanded and supplied in such a market. Around this system of defense companies is a free market in arbiters, uh, arbitrators and appeal judges to administer justice and the basic law code. Rothbard believed that such a system would see arbiters with the best reputation for efficiency and probity being chosen by the various parties in the market and will come to be given an increasing amount of business. Judges, quote, will prosper on the market in proportion to their reputation for efficiency and impartiality. Therefore, like any other company, arbitrators would strive for profits and wealth, with the most successful ones becoming prosperous. Of course, such wealth would have no impact on the decisions of the judges, and if it did, the population in theory are free to select any other judge, although, of course, they would also strive for profits and wealth, which means the choice of character may be somewhat limited, and the laws which they were using to guide their judgments would be enforcing capitalist rights. Whether or not this system would work as desired is discussed in following sections. Anarchists think it would not. Moreover, we'll argue that so-called anarcho-capitalist defense companies meet not only the criteria of statehood, but also Rothbard's own criteria for state quoted above. As regards, uh, as regards with the anarchist criterion, it is clear that defense companies exist to defend private property, that they are hierarchical and that, that they are capitalist companies which defend the power of those who employ them, they, uh, that they are professional coercive bodies, and that they exercise a monopoly of force over a given area, the area initially being the property of the person or company who's employing the association. If, as Ayn Rand noted, using a Weberian definition of the state, a government is an institution that holds the exclusive power to enforce, enforce certain rules of conduct in a given geographical area, capitalism, the unknown ideal, page 239, then these defense companies are, by the, means, are the means by which the property owner, who exercises a monopoly to determine the rules governing their property, enforces their rules. 
For this and other reasons, we should call these so-called anarcho-capitalist defense firms private states. That is what they are, and so-called anarcho-capitalism, private state capitalism. Before discussing these points further, it is necessary to point out a relatively common fallacy of these so-called anarcho-capitalists. This is the idea that defense under the system they advocate means defending people, not territorial areas. This, for some, means that defense companies are not states. However, as people and their property and possessions do not exist merely in thought but on earth, it is obvious that these companies will be administering justice over a given area of the planet. It's also obvious, therefore, that these defense associations will operate over a property owner-defined area of land and enforce the property owner's laws, rules, and regulations. The deeply anti-libertarian, indeed fascistic, aspects of this arrangement will be examined in the 